how significant is Nasrallah's death? Is this oh, going to have? Very, yeah, it's very significant. I mean, he was a high, of course, a highly revered figure um, through much of the Muslim world, you know, especially the Shia world, and um, you know, and very, very revered in Iran. Iran turned. They had a there's a well known pedestrian bridge in the heart of Tehran that they turned crimson. You know, they they turned on these crimson lights. And they say that means that it, it, it's it's a symbol of revenge. You know, I don't know, but maybe that's what it is. Um, I think it it clearly um, shocked the new uh, Russian, uh, not Russian, but rather Iranian president, uh, Pez I, um, I A lot of people were saying that he was just he was really rather naive, and he he, he made a statement. I th actually quite. I think quite extraordinary and quite explains a lot of things that are going on. Um, it, it was, it, I've seen it actually in many different places. It's clear that he made the statement, you know, there's no question about this, but he Talk said, about the Iranian president, the Iranian Pesco. president, okay. exactly. Um, he said that he had agreed to delay the retaliation. You know, we've been wondering why this retaliation to the assassination of Hania has taken so long. He said that he had agreed to because the Americans had promised that it, there would be a ceasefire in Gaza, and that's what at least what's, that's what all of the stories or these stories say. And then some add that also they had promised to lift sanctions, so at least some of the sanctions on Iran, yes. and then he would. Do it. But obviously, you know, this is what he got. So he was yeah. shocked. He went out and said it. So it's clear that this whole deal is off, and maybe you know he. Yeah, he was terribly naive, um, but he was looking for peace. He was looking for ceasefire for Hamas and an avoidance of a wider war. But, you know, at some point you have to realize, understand the kind of people that you're dealing with. And he was foolish. You know, we've been saying and many other people saying that that it's not going to happen because Israel has no interest, you know, in particular, the Netanyahu government has no interest in the ceasefire. Right. He the American promise that. doesn't mean anything right. because America doesn't control Israel. That's the problem. And, right. and you know, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah that's another thing, too. It's, it's rather, it's really, I think, very, very naive on his part to think that they could make good on that promise, even if they wanted to. And I think they probably did. I think, you know, for domestic political reasons, it looks good to have a ceasefire and say yeah. that they brought it about. Yeah, I mean, America doesn't want this genocide in Gaza. It doesn't look good on them. But it's yeah. just so crazy that even though we have the ability to stop it, we won't. Yeah. Because right. So we are completely... APAC, right. So we, we our, our government... This is because of that. Yeah, I, I'm agree. I agree. I mean, it's not that they actually want it, but it's happening and they're complicit and they're supporting it. So they are guilty of it. Right, right. But it, it, right. It's, it's just such a strange thing because we obviously don't want it. And this is actually something from the Jerusalem Post um, that posted, they reported Lloyd Austin lost it with Gallant over the Nasrallah killing. That, Lloyd, that the Pentagon is absolutely furious because we weren't given prior warning and because of basically what he said and they quoted saying said the israelis are doing this without consulting us and then ask we clean up when it comes to deterring iran right so it seems clear that that's what the u.s position was say iran just please we don't want to get in we don't want to fight you iran is like mm -hmm. good we don't want to fight you either america right. and israel's like hey you guys fight you guys fight yeah. keep on keeping you know right. he's trying to poke the bear uh, on both sides, to to right. even though it's clear that the U.S. doesn't want this, Iran doesn't want this, but Netanyahu is doing everything in his power to do it, and we keep right. on covering for it, and we, and so I'm just wondering, like, it seems at this point with tensions so high, a wider regional war is inevitable. Iran now has to do something, and I think everybody's waiting on it. Probably a lot of people in the the, the Muslim world, Shiite world, especially, are probably quite upset with Iran, saying like, why yeah. aren't you? helping Hezbollah, why did you never uh, retaliate to the assassination of Ismail Haniya? And now at this point, they're going to have to do something. And it's clear that the U.S. doesn't want to either. So I'm wondering, one, there is going to be this clash between the U.S. and Iran. These are two powers that don't really want to fight each other, but they're being forced into this conflict. Like, I how, so. right. Yeah, I, I just wonder, like, th that's has that really happened before where you have these two powers that really don't want to fight and they're being forced into it. Like how big of a fight will it be if they don't want to do it? I, I, I guess you can say though, I mean, to look at world war one, you had 
all those people, the Russian Tsar, the Kaiser Wilhelm, and in uh, the UK, they were all cousins, and they were writing letters to each other before and said, you know, let's mm -hmm. hope war doesn't happen, and then boom. So it, it, could, it could just spiral out of control, even yeah. though oh, it's yeah. clear these two powers don't want to fight. Right. Um, yeah. Well, right, I, I saw that same story about Lloyd Austin, and I think it's probably correct. But then the important thing also shows... Okay, again, you know, what we've been saying all along that Israel is trying, you know, all these these assassinations have, well, they, you know, they, they do aim to weaken Hezbollah. There's no question about it. And they have by taking out a good portion of their leadership. But they're also doing it. And I, I think especially this Nasrallah assassination was done um, in large part, uh, you know, if, if not mainly. Um, in order to to finally bring about an Iranian retaliation, which they hope they can, okay. yeah, exactly, and and Dude. which they hope to you know to um, use that to to ignite this war, you know, be, which would be first between Israel, well, certainly Israel, um, between Israel and Iran, but then um as at some point will uh, will inevitably involve the US or the Iranians is this assassination of uh Nasrallah is that more significant than the assassination of Ismail Haniyeh in Tehran do you think this is uh you know that it might be you know it's just um well of course you know that the the uh, Haniyeh assassination took place on the day of of um of uh, Khan's inauguration right and it took place on Iranian territory so there's that um but Nasrallah is a much better known uh figure within Iran and I again just say throughout the Muslim world um so I think it may be even bigger right and especially she, since she, it's she taken it and also, you know, this is not just a single event. This is the kind of the culmination of a couple of weeks of carnage, starting off with the pager attacks and then, you know, one assassination after another and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of civilian casualties. You know, we don't know how many civilians were killed in this one strike, by the way. They, like the, I think the, the uh, last I saw, the Lebanese uh, Ministry of Public Health said that they, they, um, that they had counted 11 uh, but clearly, clearly, it's a lot more than that. It's just that there are there, six high rise buildings. Yeah, collapsed. that's right. So, sometimes I they mean, say four, sometimes they say six. But either way, there just have to be dozens, if not hundreds and hundreds of civilians that were killed in this attack. And so anyway, yeah. it's just on top of it. It's just, you know, it's all of it together. It's just it's just sort of a crescendo of savagery, at, right. you know, directed at a very close ally of Iran. I I. I, you know, we, we've talked about the provocations. This is just, this is beyond a provocation. Um, and I, I think mm -hmm. it seems clear that, that Iran has to, at this point, respond. Right. Yeah, yeah no, if you just, I mean, if you just take a step back and take a look at it. I mean, just, okay, it, 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 Israel bombs the Iranian embassy in Damascus, right? And, and kills the Iranian general there. Okay. And then... The U.S. Yeah, and, and other and, Iranian officers. It was, and I, I think there were a dozen of them. Okay, a dozen Iranians hit Iranian soil in Damascus. Then the U.S. and Iran communicate and say, look, we really don't want to go to war, but clearly this is a big attack on our soil, on our embassy. This is the definition of an act of war. Okay, so they plan something. They do a retaliation. Don't kill a single um, Israeli, but they demonstrate and try to appease their people to avoid conflict. That was that retaliation. Right. Then Israel assassinates Hadiya in the capital of Tehran during the inauguration of the new right. Iranian right. president, where the so Iranian it was, president. Yeah, right. It was, it was a deliberate provocation. I mean, right. The it's fact just, that they did it on the day of the inauguration. You know, this was something which you can see that it was directed at Iran and it meant to provoke them. Right, right. But so it's this provocation after provocation, you right. know, and, and and then now this one now, you know, carpet bombing Beirut now. I mean, the, 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 I mean, we had the initial killing of, of uh, Nasrallah on Friday, um, but then that was just the beginning. They've been bombing Beirut nonstop since then. Um, and, and it's just when people 
are going to step back and look at it. Who can say that Israel is not provoking this war, that wants this war? It's like mm -hmm. if anybody's looking at it objectively, I mean, even just passively looking yeah. at it, you know, how could you not come to that conclusion that yeah. that this is something that clearly I, Israel is just wanting conflict, wanting war. They don't seem to be interested in diplomacy at all. And if you're any Arab nation around there, you know, just ask Israel, like, well, what is it that you want? What it's clear that you, you just want war. What what is it that you want to do? You you, you just right. want to keep on bombing the people in Gaza nonstop. Just say, can we get to some you know diplomacy, some type of resolution here that doesn't involve conflict? You start bombing uh, Lebanon. I just I, I just don't see how they're going to get the world on their side. Uh, oh, no. Yeah, they have no intention of getting the world is it, they've lost the world. You know, they still have the U.S. But, and incredibly, within the U.S., you know, it, 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 you know, we say it's obvious, but if you watch uh, mainstream news, you wouldn't think so. It was just spunky little Israel defending itself. Now, I mean, it's extraordinary. Yeah, clearly, like actually, administration officials and you know, certainly the Pentagon actually do understand what Israel's doing. That's why Lloyd Austin got so angry. He knew what they were doing, and you know, again, they do not want to be pulled into this war. But the incredible thing is that afterwards, he just went out and made a statement. Instead of criticizing Israel in any way, he says, you know, we stand by Israel. We're going to defend Israel and warned Iran. You yeah. Know, after, well, you know, they've already broken their promise to Iran, which we learn. And, um, you know, after this horrible, you know, string of assassinations and, uh, you know, like it looks like the, an incipient genocide in, in Lebanon, the, you know, he has the nerve to go out and warn Iran not to escalate. You know, if, you know, what is Israel doing if it's not escalation? You know, it's, well, Iran has well, stayed there, you know, well, has, has, has pulled, you know, has showed extraordinary restraint, right? Right. But, but what's, what's wild is that, the, you know, what I quoted you before, this is the Jerusalem Post saying that Lloyd Austin lost it with Gallant and, and that, Lloyd Austin is saying that, you know, they're doing this without consulting us and asking us to pick up the pieces and deter Iran after this deliberate provocation. Mm -hmm. The truth is, so the Israeli media is more unbiased and open than it is in the United uh, States. Yeah, Why well, that's, United uh, States that's always been true. I mean, that's I remember that like 30 years ago, that you can actually get a lot uh, more, you know, uh, information out of out of uh, Israeli newspapers and other media outlets. Um, than you can from the U.S. I mean, we, there's more censorship about Israel than the, than there is within Israel. More censorship in the U.S. You know than in Israel. It's it's wild. It's crazy. Yeah, I mean, it's when you go on social media, and especially if you look at Fox News or whatever, the, it's celebrations throughout all of the West, saying right. that you know this is wow, Israel is this stunning victory. Um, and they destroyed this, killed this terrible terrorist, uh, Nasrallah, that he's an evil man, responsible. They say he's responsible for the deaths of many Americans as well. Right. Is there I any what, truth to I this? Think, I think what they're referring to is, okay, there were attacks on um, American Marines during the 80s. Because following um, the Israeli invasion, actually, the U.S. sent some Marines in, into Lebanon. Mm. And... You know, I'm sorry, but I don't think you can call that terrorist because you're sending your soldiers onto foreign land and, you know, land occupied by your you know, your uh, close ally. And if they get attacked, you shouldn't be surprised. It's not what you call terrorism. It's what you call resistance. And that's what happened. Right. So, yes, you know, a number of Americans, quite a few were killed in attacks carried out by yeah, uh, Shia, and you know, later I think we can say Hezbollah and Nas Nasrallah may have been involved in that, but that's not terrorism. You know, they're not. Look, they're not bombing Americans in America. You're there in in um, in Lebanon as you know, a, a part of an occupation. You are going to be attacked. Right. Yeah. It was. I think the, what they referred to is the 1983 Beirut bombing. Beirut bomb bombings, which killed a uh -huh. lot of. Uh, Marines. But like you said, that this was uh, right after the Israeli invasion in 1982. 
Uh, Nasrallah didn't come into power, like you said, in the 90s, yeah. so he wasn't even, right. in, he yeah. wasn't even if he, leading. You know, if he was around, he would have been a low-level commander. I don't know if he was actually active then or not. Right, so this this is one, right. Hezbollah was one year old, just when it reformed. Yeah, I don't think it even existed in 1983, to mm. be honest. But maybe some of the people who later became part of Hezbollah may have been involved. That's certainly possible. But again, right. that's just not, this, this is not terrorism, you know, or you're really stretching the definition of terrorism you know, in this case. Of, yeah, well, if you're able to label the whole organization, the whole country, yeah. it's oh, terrorist, yeah. it's easy. So we understand how that works. Right, right. Well, the yeah, ad. So this is, um, it's just, it's just crazy. Then that we. Yeah. Well, we, well I, I just wanted to add something. You know, you're talking about the celebratory response on part of some of the, you know, the Western media, you know, to this mm -hmm. event. It shows actually to the extent to which, really, um, we have. Uh, fallen you know how less civilized we are than we once were um uh, back in the early 2000s the the israeli assassinate israelis um they assassinated um um a hamas leader and in the course of that assassination seven civilians died and actually george w bush who was president at that time criticized israel you know, because of those seven civilian casualties. And, you know, he wasn't roundly, I'm sure there were some, you know, uh, hotheads out there who criticized and called them anti-Semite. But in general, you know, this was, this was something an American president could do without suffering any significant consequences. It was actually a presidential thing to do. Now, look where we are with this recent attack that, you know, was on the heels of, you know, of this genocide in Gaza and the hundreds and hundreds of civilians that had already been killed in uh, Lebanon. You know, there was this attack that took out Nasrallah. It killed him, um, but it also killed clearly dozens and probably hundreds of civilians. And our president um, condoned it. You know, this, mm -hmm. So this is how far America has fallen.